Thank you for joining me this Sunday afternoon. This is Tech Vault. I'm your host, Jay. And this is where we talk about all the latest and important tech news. First off, we got some really good news for the 1070 Ti. It's been confirmed. It's not a fake. We're actually kind of happy about this one. It's been really nice to see that they actually aren't just myths going around. Something to actually bring down the Vega prices, which will be a little interesting to see as well. Next up, we've got Intel's Nirvana chips, which are apparently breaking the way, um, competing with uh, Nvidia in their lovely new... Uh, Tesla architecture, I believe. But yeah, basically artificial intelligence is now in, I guess, according to Intel and Nvidia. And even AMD is even putting a little bit of information in there as well. So let's see what we got from there. And of course, then we've got AMD's Pinnacle Ridge architecture, which will be coming up later today. And finally, we've got a look at the Ryzen Pro specs and other cool, important information. So this is Tech Vault, and stay tuned. So the biggest thing everybody's been trying to figure out is, you know, these new 1070 Ti's, and I almost said 1080 because that's what I keep thinking in my head because everybody's sitting here going, well, 1080's just came out a while ago, and they're not necessarily going to compare it up to a 1080 or a 10, uh, you know, 1080 Ti, but they're actually going to do a pretty good job of slicing the market where Vega actually slipped in and was able to get a lot more purchases. So now you're probably sitting here going, well, why did Nvidia decide to make this? And it might be an obvious question for some people and not so obvious for others. So basically, as you guys know, Nvidia wants to make money as a company, kind of give it. But the big information here is that Nvidia was, you know, kind of leaving a little bit of gap for like, you know, an option for people to go buy graphics cards. Because there's all these kind of like really close price range graphics cards and, you know, there's kind of like a gap in between where the, um, you know, the 1070 and the 1080. And that's where what AMD actually exploited. They went through and they actually put a graphics card in there and that's what the Vega cards are really, you know, stealing the market for. And so Nvidia kind of decided, they're like, hey, we want to get something in there so that we can make a little bit of money off of that as well. And so what happened was a lot of people kind of have decided now and, you know, that they were going to go with the AMD cards. And so Nvidia kind of put a card in there to get some specs off of it and get some, you know, profit margins off of it now. But now you all are wondering, well, they decided to make this 1070 Ti, but what's the point and what, how's it going to compare? Well, it's actually going to come pretty close in specs to 1080 but still leave enough margin that it's kind of an option. And now you're probably also wondering, well, why should I care about this 1070 Ti, especially maybe if I have a 1070 or I have a 1080? And the big thing is, you know, maybe you're looking for it to buy a computer, which would be the most practical option of those, is you might be looking to buy a computer and it might end up that this card might actually bring down prices of a lot of different graphics cards. We're probably expecting to see price drops in the, up all the way up to the 1080s, uh, 1080 Ti's, and we might even see some price decreases down in the 1050s, which will be interesting to see. So the next up, we've got Intel's Nirvana chips, which are basically, Intel's been trying to compete with Nvidia, which I think is kind of funny because I've always thought that Nvidia and um, Intel kind of had like a partnership, because usually if you get an Intel processor, not always, but you, get, you usually get a um, Nvidia graphics card. But now they're kind of picking up the heat, I guess, against each other, which I don't know if is a good or bad idea. But apparently, you know, Nvidia has been working on its Tesla architecture, which is kind of like a new graphics card, I don't want to say graphics card because it's not really what it is. It's more like a graphics accelerator. It's really hard to explain, but basically it's like something that acts kind of like a graphics card. It's got onboard RAM and stuff, but it doesn't actually output video. It's more instead of something that's like, um, it's really hard to explain. You might as well, it might be best for you guys to see the picture over here, but it's really hard to explain because it doesn't actually do graphics. It kind of does graphics stuff, but it doesn't. It's basically like another processor on the computer, kind of, to simplify it. It's like another set of computer base. It's like another computer base on the computer. Well, that was a mouthful. But basically, Nvidia has kind of been working on this architecture, and now Intel wants to get in there because they see think that that's obviously a good place for them to go. So they're working on kind of like a similar thing, and basically there's a lot of bit of competition in there. Next up, we've got AMD's Pinnacle Ridge. So next up in the lineup, we actually have some of the future processors AMD is going to be releasing and Pinnacle Ridge is basically going to start off starts off in 2018 for what the new perhaps Ryzen 2 processor will look like. Now first of all I want to make something very clear though that they have not even released um, the Ryzen Pro processors yet and these will be coming out soon if not already so just the point is just be in mind that this will probably be the ri dubbed Ryzen 2 or um, another name but that's what most likely what the internet most likely thinks so that's what we're going to go off of. And of course, this basically is going to have a little bit more performance difference 
and there's not really any noticeable difference. It should have the same socket though as the AM4, so it should be an AM4 socket, and hopefully it will be compatible with a lot of motherboards currently out there. Well, at least we hope so, because compatibility is always a nice thing, especially when you get a new processor, but it's still compatible with the old stuff. And finally, we've got a look at the Ryzen Pro uh, architectures, and we got a look at all that kind of stuff. So first off, let's take a moment real quick to talk about Ryzen Pro. If you guys don't know, basically AMD has kind of decided they're going to go through and make a, another kind of more powerful version of some of the processes we already have. I personally have a 10, uh, 1800X in my computer, which is not this one, obviously. This one is what I use for my videos and scripts and such, but it's actually sitting over there. But basically, the architecture that they're they're kind of tweaking and modifying it. It's actually going to be a little bit more for professional use and not necessarily for gaming, which surprisingly for me, I was really expecting them to, you know, these specs to kind of be the same because obviously it's kind of like the same processor, just tweaking a little bit. And there is a good difference in specs, but they're not making a 10, uh, 1800X. They're only going up to the 1700X. And it only, it does perform really close to the 1800X, but they didn't make one, which I was a little disappointed because I think that would have been really something cool to see. But then again, it's kind of good because it only leaves at least the top of the market still for what I have in my system. The other thing though is these new, uh, you know, this new processor is actually going to compare pretty closely. They've actually set it to line up with a lot of Intel's current processors, or not current processors, they're not latest, but you know, the most popular right now. And so like the 1700X is actually going to have, or 7700K is actually going to have something to compare to and actually be, you know, in around the same price, which will be interesting to see, especially because when you get eight cores at 16 threads compared to a four cores and eight threads, it's really interesting to see the performance differences in those as well. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you guys check out down below on the channel. And of course, also stay tuned, tune in tomorrow. I hope to see you guys right back here tomorrow for some more tech news. And of course, get up to date on all that's going around in the tech world. But if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And of course, we'll see you guys around here next time. And I hope to see you guys right here tomorrow.